could it be for me yo man louis t welcome to another brand new episode of the card collector series podcast i of course am your set man louis t thank you for joining me if you enjoy this content please do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button for more great content turn on your notification bell so you don't miss a thing and also be sure to hit the like button as it helps this channel grow exponentially at the end of each of these podcast videos we unbox or uh, have a pack rip essentially uh, usually it's a value pack uh, and this episode is no different. We will get into, and you've seen this a million times and you'll see it uh, a couple more. Uh, uh, Prestige 2021 NFL value pack. We'll get into that at the end of this episode. And so if you are not interested in today's topic, you can feel free to fast forward to the end of the video to see what we get out of the pack if there are any hits inside. So Today's topic is one I think we've talked, we've covered and talked about previously, but we haven't really had a deep dive into the the conversation. And it's misconceptions about the hobby, um, specifically pertaining to cards um, and types of cards. Let's even go a little bit even more in depth. Um, when I first got into the hobby, and I think I've explained this to you before, I really didn't know what was what. You know, when I first was a collector the first time around when I was a kid, I was a kid. So needless to say, I knew, you know, basketball cards, baseball cards, which ones were the good ones. I, I loved Fleer Ultra. Those were my favorite. Those along with um, the um, the metal, uh, metal cards, the, uh, metal in the comic space, because I collected comic cards the first time around, Metal Universe. And then there was the, I'm trying to think what brand it was. I want to say it was Finest. It was Finest. Top, I think it was Top's Finest in a basketball. And I love those as well. Um, they were dope. But anyway, I digress. I didn't really know about retail versus hobby box because i couldn't afford hobby boxes when i was a kid so everything was a pack all i bought was packs it never was a hobby box or retail box this or you know i i couldn't tell you the difference between a hobby pack and a retail pack when i was you know eight years old so you know again at the end of the day i was you know needless to say everything was kind of brand new to me getting back into the space because now i was older I could understand everything. I knew what I was spending my money on. You know, what was the better, you know, products supposedly to buy and purchase. So when I first got back into the space, I told you I was just buying up stuff. I didn't know what was what. You know, if it looked like something that I should buy, I just bought it. And I, I didn't ask enough questions. I didn't do enough research. And I think I, like I said before, spent some money that I probably didn't need to spend or could have spent it in a much more efficient manner. That said... One of the misconceptions that I had coming into the hobby, you know, after, you know, finally settling down and kind of figuring out what's what was blaster boxes versus hanger boxes versus uh, value packs. And I think this is the chain of command when when talking at it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is how I view it, at least the chain of command in the space is you know the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the barrel are the value packs now you may get a hit in a value pack but it's a value pack so you know it's cheaper it's going to be a ton of base cards they're going to guarantee you maybe five non-base cards but they're going to be specific to that you know value the little value packs and they're not going to be numbered cards or anything uh, similar to the one we're looking at right now, this prestige, you're, you're, you're guaranteed to get five sunbursts out of this thing. Um, or I think it's more like three sunbursts and then, you know, five non-base with, you know, or rookies or whatever the case may be. I think it's five um, rookies out of this thing. Needless to say, um, you don't expect to find anything major in a value pack. You get what you pay for, essentially. The next card, the, the next tier up, was supposed to be hanger boxes, you know. Um, it's not. It's not a, a, a you know packs inside. It's just one big you know pack with 
30, you know, the 60 cards, whatever the case may be inside. Um, you open it up, bunch of base cards, similar to a value pack. You'll, you'll have, you know, three to five non-base cards and maybe some, you know, rookies that they guarantee you. Um, probably won't have any numbered cards, probably won't have any big time inserts or anything. Just, you know, it, it's hit or miss. But that's the next step up. And then the, the next step up after that is a blaster box. And that's when the real fun begins, or at least that's what you, you are supposed to believe. That's when the real fun begins. When you get to blaster boxes, again, they're still hit or miss, but uh, you're more likely to find something uh, noteworthy in a blaster box. That's when you really start to get into that territory that's supposed to be game changing is the blaster boxes. Usually it's anywhere from four to six packs. Sometimes you'll get eight packs in a blaster box, depending on, you know, what blaster box you're opening. Um, and sometimes you'll get even more. But generally, there's usually no more than 90 cards in a blaster box. Um, you know, some blaster boxes like. Uh, for instance, the Donruss NFL blaster boxes have like 88 cards in them. I think it's 11 packs with eight cards in each pack. So, uh, but generally you don't get more than that. That's that's a little high on the on the blaster box end. The more premium the product, the less cards you're going to get inside of the blaster box, and the less amount of packs you're going to get. You know, a lot of times in the premium blaster boxes, you'll get four packs, and they'll usually have five cards in each pack, so it'll be a grand total of like 20 cards. Maybe you'll get 24 cards. It'll be uh, six packs with four cards in each pack, something like that when you get the premium cards. That said, uh, blaster boxes are the next step up. Then after that, of course, you get to your hobby boxes, or <clears throat> you could get to your, um, your like H2 boxes, Right. So those are like a step below the hobby box. It's like a alternate hobby box, but um, they have their own exclusives and parallels and different things that you can get. And <clears throat> maybe some different inserts. Again, not going to find those exclusives that come in a hobby box, but you'll, you'll get some exclusives out of an H2 box um, like we've seen with the. Um, select product from this year with the NBA. They've had the H2 box, and it, this was the first time they've released an H2 box. Really, this they remodeled the NBA Select. Usually, that's a premium product. You only have you only get that in in hobby form. This year, uh, they've got blaster boxes. They've got value packs. They've got H2 box. So they've really tried to make the Select product more affordable for the people that can't afford to spend twelve hundred dollars or sixteen hundred dollars. On a, on a hobby box. So uh, they've scaled that down a little bit. And then you get to the hobby box. And that's where all the goodies are supposed to you know, reside. And, and the hits are supposed to be more prevalent in a hobby box. And then, of course, you can buy um, a box or you can buy a case, obviously. So, so back to the original conversation. The misconception for me was that, oh, hanger boxes are trash. You know, you're not going to find anything in the hanger box. Um, you know, the lowest I wanted to go when I first got in was a blaster box. And I had so much success in blaster boxes, specifically in the NBA uh, realm uh, with the Prism and, and Zion Williamson and getting a silver um, in a blaster box. Changed my whole perspective on blaster boxes. And so I, I just assumed eh, you're not going to get anything noteworthy. And it's not like I've had a game changer per se in, in a hanger box, but what I've found is that hanger boxes are just as, they're just as likely to produce a hit to me, in my findings at least, um, as a blaster box. Now, there is some truth to that, there, and, and everybody's situation is different, everybody's um, experiences are different, but specifically in the NFL space, let me narrow the focus. The hanger box to me is just as likely, if not more likely, to produce some heat than a blaster box. And again, maybe that's just my experience. I know this is the thing that I feel like is the misconception for me that hanger boxes don't deliver any goods. They don't deliver the heat and you don't even need to waste your time with them. That was my approach when I first got in. Now I look at it totally different. You know, if I got two products in front of me, two, you know, NFL products from 2021, and I'm looking at both of them, 
it'd be tempting to not pick up the blaster box just because I feel like the blaster should be able to provide the heat and I got to rewire my brain to not think that way. But if I'm, I, I can tell you this much. If I'm looking at two prestige products just based off of my experience, a blaster and a hanger, I'm reaching for the hanger and I'm not thinking twice. You know, so we're going to see how it all works itself out and, and if there's any validity to that. I, I haven't had much success with the blaster boxes from Prestige. I haven't had much success from the blaster boxes with Elite. Um, I did have some success with the Donruss blaster, but blaster boxes haven't really done much. They haven't really moved the needle much for me recently, whereas hanger boxes, and maybe you could argue, well, there have been more hanger boxes to begin with, so that's why you've had more success. And, and that's definitely an argument worth um, making in, in a case that can be made for that. But I'll just say this. It, it, it's not necessarily that hanger boxes are better than blaster boxes. It's just that the misconception for me was that hanger boxes were trash and they weren't worth my money or my time. And that's false. That was the misconception. And I can tell you right now with certain brands, I'm more likely to reach for the hanger box than I am the blaster box. What's the misconception that you had or have? Maybe you need to dispel that or put it to the test. You know, when I do these versus videos, that's me kind of putting theories like this to the test to figure out, is it better? Can you get more heat out of a blaster or out of a hanger or out of a value pack? Like where does the, you know, heat lie? And, and, and can you have, and obviously, Everything is subject to the box that you're opening, obviously, because you could have uh, the, the best pack out of a case of a hanger box and you could have the worst uh, you know, box out of a case of a blaster box and you can get a rare case hit out of the hanger box and you could get absolutely nothing out of the blaster box. And, you know, that's just your luck. That's just how it kind of fell to you that time. So you just, it's hard to say, I just know hanger boxes aren't as bad as I thought they were. And that's the misconception. So let's get to this uh, 30 card value rip prestige 2021 NFL space. You know what it is. We've done this a million times. We'll do it a few more. Still have some left. So until we get through all of them, as I've told you before, we're going to keep doing this. So we'll run through this real quick. DeAndre Swift. Base, thanks for coming. Emmanuel Sanders, base, thanks for coming. T. Higgins, base, thanks for coming. Philip Lindsay, base, thanks for coming. Jamie Collins, base, thanks for coming. Mike Williams, base, thanks for coming. Raheem Mostert, base, thanks for coming. Rashawn Gary, base, thanks for coming. Jameson Crowder, base. Thanks for coming. Baker Mayfield, base. Thanks for coming. Daniil Hunter. That's a sunburst. Daniel Jones. Sunburst. Aaron Rodgers, prestigious pros. That's an insert. Josh Jacobs, powerhouse. Insert. Patrick Mahomes. Any given Sunday. Ooh, looky here. Josh Allen Heroes. We already have one of these, but you never say no to a Heroes, man. These are one of my favorites. So that right there, you get one of those. That is definitely a bang. Didn't expect that. Kalen Hill. That's a rookie. Trevor Lawrence, that's a rookie. Pat Fryer Muth, that's a rookie. Mac Jones, that's a rookie. So this has been an, a fire. Uh, so we get back to the base cards. Roquan Smith, base. Saquon Barkley, base. Carson Wentz, base. Drew Locke, base. Cam Akers, base. Austin Hooper, base. 
Ryan Tannehill, base. Alvin Kamara, base. Kirk Cousins, base. And Chase Winovich, base. This has been a fire um, value pack. Josh Allen Heroes is the highlight. So this is my second Josh Allen Heroes. And there you have it. Got a Mac Jones and a uh, just, um, Trevor Lawrence rookie as well. I'd say that was pretty good eating out of a value pack, if I may say so myself. Probably one of the best ones we've had on the podcast to date. So uh, that was outstanding. Uh, hopefully we get more of that moving forward. But that's going to do it for me, your man Louis T, here on the Card Collector Series podcast. Look forward to chopping it up with you in the near future. Hopefully, if you enjoyed this content, you will subscribe for more great content. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And also hit the like button as that helps this channel grow exponentially. Until next time, I'm your man, Louis T, reminding you it's hunting season. It never ends, especially here on the Card Collector Series podcast. Until next time, have a good one. Louis T. Network.